Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Howard, Chair of the ASP 2022 Global Conference. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Howard, Chair of the ASP 2022 Global Conference. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Howard, Chair of the ASP 2022 Global Conference. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Howard, Chair of the ASP 2022 Global Conference. Hello, everyone. I'm Lauren Howard, Chair of the ASP 2022 Hey, Laura, I think you have hop and open on another tab. You just got to close that. Okay, I did. There you go. All right, now go ahead. Sorry. All right. Sorry, everyone. Love those technical challenges. Um, again, welcome to this very special session uh, for the 20, 2022 conference. We are have the Goodman Award for Excellence in Strategy winner for 2021, Strategy Execution Through OKRs. If you're not aware, the Goodman Award for Excellence in Strategy recognizes distinction in the practice of strategy. The award cycle runs annually and ASP is pleased to showcase the City of Vaughan, the 2021 Goodman uh, Award winner. Here to present their award-winning strategy are Christine Knick, Coniglio, pardon me, and Kathy Castitas. Christina is the manager in strategic planning and corporate performance, performance metrics for the city of Vaughan. Christina has more than 15 years of experience working in the public and private sectors, providing financial and strategic expertise. Christina is a chartered professional accountant, Greenbelt certified in Lean Six Sigma, and received an Objective and Key Results OKR Master Certification. She has developed and currently manages the OKR program at the City of Vaughan. Kathy is the Director for the Office of Transformation and Strategy. Kathy has more than 30 years of experience working in the public and private sector, providing expertise in strategic leadership, business transformation, process improvement, and human resources. Kathy has a Bachelor of Arts degree, a graduate diploma in public administration, and is a project management professional. Ladies, we're anxious to hear what you have to share with us today. Welcome. Thank you, Lorette. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kathy Castitas. I'm the Director of Transformation Strategy here at the City of Vaughan. Uh, Christine and I are thrilled to be here today to talk about our strategic planning uh, process and approach and share our, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our experience with you today. Uh, so we're very proud and very honored to have been the winners of the 2021 uh, Richard Goodman Strategic Planning Award. We were thrilled to be honored with this award, which was a great recognition, a very different approach that we took here at the City of Vaughan in strategic planning and business planning. So we're happy to share with that with you today. So today we're going to talk a little bit about our senior leadership team governance model. We're going to talk about strategic priority oversight teams, what we like to call as spots, because they're spot on for what they need to do. We're also going to tell you a bit about our implementation of the OKR methodology, the objective and key results methodology. And we're also going to talk about how we're leveraging data for really good evidence based approaches on how we conduct our business and how we make decisions on our priorities. Uh, so we're very happy to be here today. Thank you. And on that note, I guess we'll kick off. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. That cough was building. <laughs> So again, this is about our strategic plan and about our business planning process. So I thought we'd start with our strategic plan itself. Uh, so we have our strategic plan, which covers a term of council. So we're a municipal government. Uh, our term of council runs every four years. So this one is for 2018 to 2022. And when we were developing the strategic plan to guide the four-year term of council strategy, we were coming out of a previous four-year version and really looking to, to sort of take it in a different direction and a different sort of approach on strategic planning. Uh, and part of it was really developing a roadmap, if you will, to get us to the objectives of the organization, what we wanted to accomplish. 
And this roadmap is sort of put forward in this sort of schematic, if you will. And it's almost like a bit of a subway line uh, as well. At the time we were, we were opening up uh, a very significant undertaking of a subway uh, and transit route that bridges the Toronto uh, city core to Vaughan where we are. Uh, so we were playing on that a little bit and sort of working on this sort of mapping, if you will, or subway mapping. Um, so in essence, the strategic plan uh, is, is grounded obviously in our vision, our mission and our values. Our vision is really to become that citizen, that, that city of choice and that employer of choice, and really to, to create a city that is engaging, that is innovative, that is welcoming, and that really is a very inclusive and progressive city uh, for people to work, play, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and learn within, within one very uh, world-class sort of city that our mayor talks about. Our mission is really citizens first through service excellence. We are a municipal local government. Everything we do touches a citizen, it touches a user in our community. And really everything that we do is based on that citizen experience. So our mission is very clear on that. Uh, our values are grounded in respect, respect for our employees, respect for our citizens and our users and everybody that we come in contact with and how we conduct ourselves, accountability and dedication to the work that we do. So that's sort of the grounding of our strategic plan. The vision, mission and values have been an ongoing mainstay for us for many, many years. They haven't changed very much. They've been well grounded, but the strategic priorities do change. They change with each term of council. They change with each uh, four year cycle, if you will. Some of them are good, you know, solid mainstays as well. Uh, but over time, they tweak and they morph. We are a very big, growing city, uh, and we are constantly in development here at the City of Vaughan. So our key strategies reflect that. So I'll go through some of these, these nine key uh, strategic priority oversight areas for you right now. Uh, you'll see the blue icons there at the uh, sort of at the top of the, of the map. Transportation mobility, city building, environmental stewardship, active, safe and diverse communities and economic prosperity, investment and social capital. These are really our outward facing strategic priorities. These are the things that drive the enhancement of the city and they're there that propel what we're trying to create for this city. Underneath that, you'll see those three green icons of citizen experience, operational performance, and staff engagement. They're kind of the back of the house enablers of what happens in the in the, the those blue frontward facing uh, priority areas. They're the things that really create the dynamic um, ability for this organization to uh, to create and sustain and 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 enhance services so that we can complete our, complete our mission of citizens first through service excellence. Uh, we're a big believer in the public sector service model, which means uh, you know, happy employees well, that are well operationalized, create a happy experience for our citizens. Uh, and those things all sort of work well together. So those green icons, those strategic party areas are very important to become the backbone of what we do. You'll see between those something called good governance, and it really bridges the, the front of the house and the back of the house, if you will. It bridges the citizen experience as well as what we do as an administration. And good governance is just that. It's about accountability. It's about transparency, about value for dollar, financial stewardship, and how we conduct ourselves as an organization and as a local government. Uh, so those are very important pieces of our strategic plan. And, and that's what we've built these, these last three and a half years of, of developing and delivering on these strategic priorities. You'll see that orange icon at the bottom of the screen that says department business plans. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really the, the, um, the uh, embodiment of our strategic plan. As we all know in strategic planning, many of us scratch our heads and say, sure, we've got a great glossy strategic plan. We've got some great motherhood statements. It gets created, it's put on a shelf and nobody looks at it ever again. Well, we've changed that dynamic here at the City of Vaughan and we've integrated and embedded what we do at the strategic level right to the operational level. And Christina will talk about our business planning approach and how that is, uh, that, uh, is um, created within that dynamic. So we do operationalize our strategic plans. So that's our strat plan. Over to the next slide. I want to talk a bit about our senior leadership governance model. While we were developing the 2018-2022 strategic plan, we, we were asking ourselves that question. How do you make it real? How do you bring it to life? How do you give it some, some, some teeth so that it, it, it stays top of mind? And at the time, we were also looking at the governance of our organization at the, at the administrative level, not the council level, but the administrative level. And uh, we developed this governance model and within it, 
uh, we recognize that the strategic plan and the strategic priorities are absolutely integral to the governance model and the governance model to the success of the strategic plan. So this governance model starts with, to your left, the, the vision, the, the vision, mission, and values that we just talked about. It, it takes those strategic priorities and it builds those priorities within that circle of activity within the governance model and outcomes are really the service excellence results that we now measure and have KPIs on and are very quantitative as well as qualitative in our reporting on. And Christina will talk a bit about that as well. Um, but really the, the governance model, is, it's a way to ensure that we have uh, 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 sight lines on the strategic plan, that the priorities are always well in mind. And if they need to be modified, they're consciously modified and they're modified with good information and based on the, that sort of data that drives those models modifications. Within the governance model, you see the strategic directions, the business planning, the priority setting, which is integral to, to how we make decisions. In any government context, we know we have limited resources, we have limited time, we have limited money, and we have limited patience for tax increases and things like that. So we have to make sure those priorities are set very, very well. So that's what this model does. And it does it within components of ethics, compliance, uh, investing in our talent, investing in our technology, investing in our processes, and together it works to, to really breathe life into our strategic plan. So that's our governance model, which really embeds the strat plan within it. So as I said at the beginning, we're going to talk about spots. So these are the strategic priority oversight teams. So when Christina and I were putting this new plan together, we again, we were talking about how do we breathe life? How do we make sure it's sustained? And we came up with the spot concept. And this is really an ownership and accountability uh, process, if you will. It's about setting priorities. It's about providing corporate wide accountability. And I stress the word corporate wide. We're trying to get rid of the silos of people saying, well, this is my piece of the strategic plan. This is the only thing I'm worried about. No, it's a very strategic enterprise wide accountability that we're looking at. It, spots also provide for cross departmental problem solving and a very cross functional multi perspective lens to problem solving. Uh, they also provide for the monitoring and the progress reporting on the achievement of the objectives or the modifications thereof. And they're very much grounded in staff engagement. Again, it's bringing that strat plan to the lowest level of the organization, the field, the ground level, everybody is involved some way in the strategic plan. So these are our spots. So let's let's dig into these a little bit more in the next slide. So lots of words here, but I'll, I'll walk you through this a little bit. So each spot, so if we go back to those blue and green icons, those are our strategic priorities. So there is a strategic priority oversight team that manages each one of those priorities. Uh, there is a, a responsibility to, to take on the key activities of those strategic plan priorities and to make sure that they're always aligned and to make sure that they're resourced and that they're reporting up uh, as well as throughout the organization. They start with that first green segment with oversight team. And this is really the spot sponsor. So sorry for the nomenclature, SLTE refers to our senior leadership team uh, executive. This is our highest level of, uh, of, um, of uh, executive uh, direction in the organization uh, and leadership. And we have one uh, representative from each of our executive that sponsors one of our spots. So they've been given accountability for each one of those strategic priority oversight areas. They provide overall support, they ensure alignment, they help get barriers out of the way if there's barriers or issues, and they help address any concerns as they go along. Um, the spot sponsors are also uh, cross-filtered a little bit. We have uh, not taken a traditional approach saying, well, if you're the commissioner, or in our case, we call them deputy city managers, of planning, you're not necessarily going to be the sponsor of the of the city building spot. You may be uh, a sponsor of something else. And in our case, the uh, city building spot sponsor is our deputy city manager of legal and our city solicitor. So we've really cross uh, cross filtered these experiences and brought different lenses into how people approach the sponsorship of the spots. Again, it gives that the enterprise wide sort of thinking on it. The spots are also supported by our senior leadership team, which is the next layer of directors in our organization. And they provide a little bit more subject matter expertise and ownership, uh, but again, cross-filtered and cross-functional uh, in, in nature. 
The overall uh, executive leadership part of the spots are supported by the working teams. And these are, these are the folks in blue or that grayish blue, depending on what your screen looks like. Uh, these are our managers, our supervisors, our project managers. Uh, these are the folks that provide subject matter expertise. They're the ones that roll up their sleeves and work with our spot sponsors and our executive to get the work done. Um, and again, here we have a very cross-filtered approach to how we do this so that we can bring in different risk lenses, that we can bring in different perspectives. Um, but really, these are the folks that are responsible to, to raise issues, to do that risk analysis, and they have complete empowerment to raise things to a spot sponsor, say, this isn't working, we need some help, or we have a problem. And that spot sponsor is on the spot to, to address the issues. Um, that bottom layer of this slide, which is that sort of uh, buff kind of orange pinky, uh, these are the support departments. And something that we realize, and as good project managers, as we assign resources to multiple activities and multiple objectives, we realize over and over again, it's, you know, kind of the same people assigned to the similar projects over and over again, and they're very stretched and they're all over the place. Um, so what we've consciously done is taken a look at the backbone of the organization, the administration, finance, human resources, my department, Office of Transformation and Strategy, legal, corporate communication, information technology. These are the support departments. They make all these objectives and strategies happen. So we're consciously looking at their roles and responsibilities, who's on uh, what uh, uh, projects, and they also lead into our project planning and our project oversights. Um, so this is a very holistic approach to our spot governance structure. It really involves a lot of people. It engages everybody at the right levels. Uh, and it gives people um, a disciplined approach to getting the job done. This is all going on. It's not to say people weren't doing the job. They're all there. They're all scattered doing their own thing. But it brings them together under a spot sponsorship that gives them the focus and the discipline and the recognition of the work that they're doing to, to it propel the organization towards the strategic directions that we're trying to accomplish. So that's our spot structure. Uh, from an accountability perspective for reporting and information sharing, which is just as important as the reporting information sharing, uh, we meet on a very regular basis quarterly. There's milestone reporting. Uh, there's reporting on the execution of any key activities. And we have a very uh, quantitative as well as qualitative performance and measurement uh, inputs as well. And those are reported on a quarterly basis. Semi-annually, we also do a roundtable reporting of all the spots. We all get together and share information and come together on, on the progress of the, of, the, uh, of the strategic priorities and the objectives. Uh, and also part of the reporting process is an annual report to council. And we just came away from our third year reporting uh, to council just a, a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, ratification yesterday, as a matter of fact, of the third year report. And we're, we're thrilled. I mean, as we all know, globally, uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has shifted so many things, uh, priorities, resources, um, uh, uh, just our focus. But one thing at the City of Vaughan that we've been able to do, and the SPOTS helped us do this, was to quickly assess COVID's impact on our strategic um, uh, objectives and to assess what we needed to jig or, or modify. And we're so pleased to say that almost 90% of what we set out to do in 2018 was on target, spot on for what we needed to accomplish and we're still on target. Um, this organization pivoted very well through COVID-19. Um, you know, obviously we all had legislated uh, closures and restrictions, but for those things that we could still deliver and, and continue on our mission of Citizens First through Service Excellence, we did. We modified with over 160 uh, immediate innovations and process improvements, online services, virtual services. Um, there's a whole different enhancement to the customer experience and the citizen experience. And we were able to really continue to meet our strategic priorities and the spots helped us identify those and it helped us manage those changes. Uh, so yeah, a few things had to pivot. Of course they did. COVID was, uh, was unprecedented from that perspective, but by and large, uh, you know, COVID persisted, but city building continued and we're, we're very happy with that. And the, the strategic plan approach really helped that uh, come to fruition. So we're very proud of that as well. So I think that's my piece uh, on the, the overview of our strategic plan and our SPOT approaches. Uh, Christina is going to take us to the next layer, which is really the objective and key results in the business planning methodology, which gets us into the next layer of detail on strategic planning. Christina, over to you.
Wonderful. Thank you, Kathy, and welcome, everybody. So when we talk about that orange icon that Kathy showed in our strategic plan, uh, the city really moved towards enhancing that. So the city adopted what's called the OKR, so Objective and Key Results Methodology. It's actually, it was actually created in the 1970s uh, by Andy Grove when he worked at Intel. And then it came to be in a book called Measure What Matters, and it was written by John Doerr. So highly recommend the book if anyone uh, hasn't read it already. But the OKR methodology is really a, ensuring that the entire organization is focusing their efforts in the same direction, right, in terms of, uh, in terms of developing and, and caring for the strategic plan. It motivates staff to do even better because it provides them clarity with what with what good looks like and what results we're really trying to achieve. So there's a very big staff engagement component to this OKR methodology. A lot of Canadian banks follow OKRs, uh, the Googles, the Intels of the world, and it's recently getting a lot of um, attention within the government sector. So we are very proud to have adopted it within the city of Vaughan. So this is our governance framework, and it gives you a sense of kind of where business planning and strategic planning all falls in. So we have that 30 year long term vision. We call that our official plan at the city. And then the strategic plan is really that four year increments to allow us to get to that long term vision. And the strategic plan is cascaded through departments uh, and the mechanism used is through business planning and business planning is done first and, and then followed by budgeting. We really want to ensure we're having those strategic conversations through business planning, and then that allows and ensures that our budget is tied back to the business plan and our resources are planned to allow us to achieve the strategic plan. The OKR methodology also cascades down to the individual goal setting perspective. So right from the top to the bottom of the organization, we have that alignment back to the strategic plan. And we love this slide because it's really, if we think about it, organizations don't really achieve the goals. It's the people that do. And at the city, we realized that we really needed a process that could allow everyone to see kind of, you know, how they fit in and, and how they contribute to uh, achieving the, the strategic plan. And, and that's really where OKRs has come in. And it's been a really big game changer for us. We've been getting a lot of great feedback that staff feel more engaged, they, un they understand really what we're trying to achieve and they feel more connected to the city, which has been really wonderful to hear. So I think we all can agree where, and I know Kathy mentioned this at the onset, we're usually all really good at developing plans. So check, that's something that we're all really good at doing. But what tends to happen uh, for ourselves at Vaughn is we tend to develop that business plan, then put it aside and we don't really check on it again. Uh, and that's where we knew that we really had to tip that scale more towards the execution. And OKRs have really allowed us to do that and, and to make sure that we are looking back at our business plans uh, on a quarterly basis. So to break down OKRs for you, we've um, we've bonicized the approach. So for those that do know or follow the OKR methodology, typically it's just the objective and the key result. So you can see here, we've bonicized it by adding in uh, that orange, the key activities. And we've done that just, you know, based on the maturity of the organization and what suits our strategic plan uh, is to have those key activities. So I'll kind of quickly walk us through this. So the objective is really, you know, what are we trying to achieve? And we have a methodology here at Vaughn where we say, you know, consistently across all departments, they should, every objective statement should start with a verb. It should have an outcome and a business value why. And that business value is really important. It's, it's important for staff to know what, why we're achieving this. Uh, I, you know, as leaders, we may know why we're doing it, but it's, it's really good to communicate uh, that to staff so they feel more connected to it. The K for key activities are those tasks. So what are those key, you know, key initiatives that we need to do to accomplish that objective? And lastly is the results, right? How, what, what are those performance measures, either quantitative or qualitative, that will indicate to us if we're achieving our objective. And one thing I've on that we've done is made sure that, you know, they could be outcome based. You may have, you know, data for it, you know, increase from X to Y, but it also could be project based because we have many departments that, uh, for example, our legal group where, you know, it's more about projects. Um, so it's more about the milestones that they're achieving. So it's really important to make sure that you have a mix of both of them. So that's the O, the K and the R. We took a very phased approach to implementing uh, OKRs at the city. We didn't want to start it all at once and, and 
uh, we really wanted to make sure we piloted with a small group first. We took some time for the organization to learn the OKR concept and even for ourselves to get uh, you know, more educated on it, making sure that we develop the tools and the templates in place uh, to support organizations as they embarked on this as well. So that really was phase one for us. And then we started to work with our pilot groups and really started to develop those OKRs, like really have those visioning exercises, looking at the strategic plan and helping departments to really think about what are those three to five key OKRs that you need to achieve and communicate to your staff um, for next year. And following that, and just as important is not, like we mentioned, not just developing the OKRs, but how are we going to align that down to our staff? Uh, we take a lot of time at the beginning of every year uh, within our group, working with departments and you know, looking at the different methods of how we can cascade that down. And we'll, we'll show that with you next. And then we call it the OKR meeting approach, making sure that you're, we stop the organization four times a year. We have everyone check in on their OKRs uh, within our platform and just really ensuring that departments are having those strategic conversations around, you know, how are we progressing? Do we need to pivot? And we know that COVID has definitely allowed us, has told us to pivot quite frequently, but having those conversations, what do we need to do differently next quarter so that we're achieving those OKRs? So it's really making sure that OKRs are staying top of mind with everyone because the more top of mind they are and the more times that you're looking at it, the more likely they are to be achieved. So there are, we'll quickly go through this, but there are two ways um, that you can align OKRs within a department. So we always say you start with the strategic plan. And in this method, it's where an entire OKR at the department level, uh, so you see the department OKRs, is cascaded to teams. So in this case, about ensuring that business plans are aligned to the strategic plan would come down to myself within Kathy's team. And then I then align that, okay, well, what do we need to do to achieve that? Well, that's implementing OKRs. And then I then, and then cascade and align that down to my team members in terms of facilitating OKR sessions. So the feedback we've been seeing is that at the individual contributor level, they can visually see how they're connected back up to their manager and to their director right back up to the strategic plan in the different priority areas. It's always visually good to see that. So that's method number one. And the last method and, and way that we've been aligning OKRs is taking a key activity at the department level and cascading the key activity down to the different teams. So the example you'll see here on your screen is at the department level, uh, there was an OKR that was developed in this example to support COVID mitigation and reporting. And then there was about four different key activities that were built under that. So that was the K. So my team, for example, would take that K and then we would then cascade, okay, what does that mean? We need to develop a data and analytics team. And then that became our objective. And then we developed a series of key activities that went down to the individual. And you can see just their initials at the bottom. Look at another example how the individual sees how they're connected back up to their department OKR and back up to the strategic plan. As, as Kathy mentioned on the onset, uh, leveraging insights from data is something we're very passionate about here at the city uh, and something we're really um, doing a lot to, to move ahead and to invest in. So at the spot level that Kathy mentioned, we do have performance measures. So we have internal dashboards that we're leveraging at those meetings, uh, those quarterly meetings. So we're ensuring that our, you know, our key activities, are, how are they progressing, but how are those performance measures? Are we seeing, are we going in the right trend? Are, are we seeing what we expect to see? And as Kathy mentioned, we, we report back to council as well on an annual basis. And that's just a copy of the reports you see at the bottom. We're also leveraging a lot of great insights from the WCCD. So the WCCD stands for the World Council on City Data. And that's really allowing us to collect data um, and really start to compare ourselves globally. So where do we stand in terms of sustainable growth um, and, and qualified workforce? And how do we take that information back and, and assess ourselves strategically? So for example, uh, you'll see here, we have a highly qualified workforce and we see where we are you know, on, on, a, on a global scale and our economic and development off, uh, department will take that information and it's, it's known in Vaughn here that we do have high talented workforce. And then what we do is we wanna make sure we're giving back to the community. So we'll, from our you know, entrepreneur, small business 
uh, startups, we'll look to the community to help each other out and we'll develop programs based on that. So it's leveraging the insights from the WCCD um, to inform our services and our program offerings within Vaughan. I'm really proud of that. And of course, COVID has been uh, definitely something we wanted to track. So the city put together its first ever COVID data and analytics team. Um, and what they did together is using a ClickSense tool, monitored the situation of COVID um, on a regular basis and provided input back to the emergency operations center. And this is a very big part of our strategic plan. One of our core areas within that bottom green operational performance is really about leveraging data for decision-making. So these dashboards that were created and automatically generated showed Vaughn data uh, with COVID, uh, provincial data, Canada-wide data, and the insights were used to inform decision-making around uh, amenity openings, park openings, uh, where are good locations from a GIS perspective to do uh, pop-up centers for COVID testing. So it's another way where we were able to leverage the insights um, from what we collected to inform uh, really the safety of residents, um, to ensure the safety of residents. So with that, if there's any uh, anything further we can help, I know we'll have an open session on questions, but uh, Kathy and I were also part of a Municipal World article. So if you'd love to hear more or read more about the OKR process, uh, please do, do check that out. But of course, we are always available um, via email uh, at any time to answer any questions you may have. And really want to thank you and to thank the association for the opportunity to come speak about our spots, uh, our OKRs, and our approach to strategic planning. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Ladies, that was absolutely amazing. And I see why you uh, earned the Richard Goodman Award. Very well done. Thank uh, we have a, um, a question from Denise McNearney. What planning software are you using for planned content as well as tracking and reporting? Yes. Shane, you want to take that? Yeah, that's a great question. We're using the ClearPoint software. So that's where we house our strategic plan and that's where we do all of our tracking as well. And, and I'll just ask a follow-up to that is how visible um, is your your plan and the OKRs to the organization? Yeah, Very. yeah. I was gonna say, I can, I can start and Kathy, please feel free to add. So we, on our internet, um, so quarterly, every department goes in and provides their update. And then we provide dashboards back to directors. Uh, and also on our uh, internal website, we post um, the dashboards from, Clear, from ClearPoint that shows the traffic light. So the status light of all the key activities. So everyone in the organization um, quarterly is updated on the progress of the strategic plan. Yeah. And then and externally, we also are very visible there as well as uh, on our website. One of the slides that Christina had up, we have each of the year one, year two, and now the year three has just been posted on the reporting of uh, the strategic plan and the results and the milestones. And we also have our performance measure indicator by uh, strategic priority area. And many of our strategic priority areas are also uh, governed, and this is something that we need to add into our presentations, I think, for future, Christina. We have task forces that are council-led. Uh, that actually also focus on various components of the strategic plan and the the performance of the task forces are also uh, on those on the um, on the website as well so we're internally very transparent and externally as well and that transparency goes to the governance model for sure it was it's it's a guiding principle for us for sure yeah that's great and i and i know that um with the employees performance tied to the objectives, that that's a real good motivator to make sure that they that there's that the things for which they're going to be rewarded are staying on track. Yeah, absolutely. We a, so we have a question from Dana Primack. How much time did the learning phase take? Yeah. Great question, Christina. Great, yeah, I, you know what I would say, probably about six months. Uh, so we did take a course. The course was a three-month uh, program. And while we were taking the course, we started to develop uh, all of our tools and templates. So probably six months before we fully launched out to the organization. But I will say that it's really, um, I, I, I'd say it's a good two-year learning curve, though. 
when you talk about real adoption, because uh, there are laggards on any sort of change of this magnitude. Um, and the early adopters were there and they are our champions and they continue to be so. The formal learning, definitely a good six months for us to all get under that, but a good two year window of cycling in and cycling out and working with people. And, and in, in after those first two years though, it's amazing how it's taken off now. Yeah, and just to add to that, uh, you know, there's those the resistors to change and I never thought I'd hear them say talk about OKRs and two years later, <laughs> We're in meetings and those resistors are saying, yeah, so I looked at my OKRs yesterday. It's like, I never thought this day would come. <laughs> so it just, it, it speaks to the process. Um, yeah. It is a change management process as well. Uh, so you have to slowly get people on board for sure. Uh, so Dana commented, congratulations on your award and successful planning approach. I agree. Thank you, Dana. Um, Thank you. Very informative session. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. And Dana did have a follow-up question. Um, what course did you take? Yes. Yeah, it was the OKRs um, Better Works. So it was offered through the Better Works organization. And it could be done virtually as well. So if you go to betterworks.com, I believe, um, there is that course to take. So it's like an intro to OKRs uh, and you get great support. I have to say it's a phenomenal course uh, and it can be done at your pace. good to be able to get to it virtually. Yeah. Um, so I, in my experience in uh, strategic planning, some of the challenges uh, can be that you measure what you could, not what you should. So when you felt like you got to the right measures, did you find you had gaps in your data that would allow you to report on that? And if so how did you close those gaps? Yep. Christina, you want to start that yeah, one? Yeah, for sure. We definitely have gaps. So we know what we should be collecting. Uh, sometimes it is hard to find the data. So we developed a lot of uh, data development plans. Um, so if we don't have the data today, but we know that it's a good measure to collect, well, how do we start collecting that? And, and where, do we, where can we get that information? So we call it our data development forms. Uh, so we may not be able to track it today, but hopefully we can track it next year. Data is sitting in a lot of parts of the organization. Um, Unfortunately, we are working with our data architect and have a great partnership working with him in terms of, you know, really developing a data catalog. So a data catalog is also one of our initiatives within our strategic plan, um, just to have a centralized location to get the data rather than it being in Excel spreadsheets and in people's um, hard drives. So we have a data and analytics strategy that we're also developing as well to help support us in, in getting those measures that you talked about with that missing data. And the message is, is very clear when we talk to people, don't wait till it's perfect because you'll be waiting for a very, very, very long time. Um, and you know, once that energy starts, it's amazing. Christina has done such a great job with what we call communities of practice on data, uh, pulling people together and they're identifying where the gaps are. People used to be afraid of the data. They'd be afraid of what it's telling us. And I'd rather just not report, or I'd rather, I'd rather give you a milestone that you know has no, no quantification because they were afraid of the information. And now people are coming forward saying, no, oh, no, there's a gap here and I wanna know why and let's find out how we can fill it. So it's never gonna be perfect. Keep going and it, they'll come for sure. It really is great to see. Uh, Janet Brown asked, how do you visualize your metrics, charts, et cetera, and how, how do you decide when performance is a trend rather than a blip? Okay. Yeah, so we use the ClickSense um, tool set uh, for, for developing our dashboards. A ClearPoint, ClearPoint, the software for our strategic plan, also does offer visualization of performance measures, um, but we've moved towards using Click. It, because Click is a tool that can connect to our different systems. And I think what a lot of our performance measures in terms of like a blip that you talked about, right now I think we're at a point we're developing baselines. Um, so we're really just trying to get a sense of what's our baseline um, and comparing that to kind of what the service level target is. Uh, we don't have a lot of years back, unfortunately for a lot of our measures. So I think we're still in, our, in level one of our maturity with that. Um, the first step was really just collecting the data, start developing those baselines, and then in the future years, we'll get more of a sense of uh, what's an outlier and, and what's a blip or, or what this is kind of normal part of the business. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, 
Oh, so Susan Redwan asked a question. Um, can you say more about the community of practice for data? Who's a member of that COP? Yeah. It, yeah, that's a wonderful initiative that we started. Uh, there's about 56 members and it's data wow. analysts, as well as we have some directors as well um, that are coming together. This is at the side of their desk, but we're coming together once a month. And it was just something a few of us did on the side. And it's been wonderful to connect people. It did have a slow start. Uh, at first, no one was really talking and it was more um, a few of us giving presentations. And then within the fourth meeting, everything turned and it was people were connecting with one another and asking each other questions. And how do you do that dashboard? Or I didn't realize that we had that data at the city. And now it's taken a life of its own in that it's not no longer being facilitated through Kathy's department. It's being facilitated on its own. Yep. So we have a sign up sheet and people within the community are volunteering to be the moderator uh, as their own professional development opportunity. And we're getting, you know, speakers and, and they're each, each other, everyone's sharing dashboards with one another. So uh, something that started really small with maybe like 15 to 20 people has grown out to about 56 people coming and attending on their own. Yeah. It's wow. broken down the silos across the organization. It's the epitome of what we're trying to, to create with uh, the way we approach strategic planning and, and business planning. And kudos to Christina. She's really done a great job of leading that team. Fine. Yeah. Um, so Monica Allen uh, commented, oftentimes data collected by government organizations is in disparate systems, which makes it difficult to organize and monitor. Therefore, having a centralized system for reporting is the key to success of planning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and those disparate systems and, and those, you know, it, it's about where's the truth, right? And we always talk about one truth, especially when you're talking about public based data and data that could potentially um, be used to make very critical decisions on the taxpayer's dime, right? Um, so having that one truth and, and, you know, working with our team in the office of our chief information officer on the data analytics side and the data architecture, we have some areas of the organization, organization that have really robust and really um, uh, valid data that, that we can rely on and that there's others that we approach with some trepidation. And we're honest to say that we're going to say, like, this is this is a cleanup that needs to be done. Uh, and again, I, I'll let Christina finish this thought, but. That's what the community practice is about. It starts to identify those gaps and those weaknesses in our data uh, and then gives some reliance. And with that comes a strategy and a governance structure that we've been working with our chief information officer on about, you know, how do we get to that one truth and how do we maintain the validity of that and the authenticity of it? So yeah, very, very important uh, question. Thank you. Christina, I'm sure you want to add to that. Yeah, that is a great question. In addition to that, not only gaps in terms of having you know, data sitting in different parts of the organization, but gaps from a personal like competency perspective as well. So through the communities of practice, we realized, you know, we needed a lot of um, training on data literacy, data visualization, data modeling, even data scripting. So through the communities of practice, we started to get a sense of, you know, what courses should we be offering to help support our data and business analysts. And so we've offered five courses this year and there's wait lists on all of them. So who would have thought we didn't even really realize the need um, uh, for all of the data training? Because once we enable our data analysts, then that's really where they can just take the data and think about their processes and how they're collecting the data and where the data is sitting. So a core part of the, the community's practice is that learning and development as well. Yeah. Great. Well, this is a great presentation. Thank you for sharing with sharing it with us. And again, congratulations on receiving the Richard Goodman Award for Excellence and Strategy. And we look forward to hearing your continued improvement on the processes that you've put in place. Thank you, Loretta. It's been our absolute pleasure and on our honor. And thank you to the audience for the questions. We really enjoyed ourselves and happy to share. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, everybody. Right, thank you. Uh, now I'd like to introduce our next session uh, and turn it over to Linda Parker Gates.